worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. church everyone <clears throat> how we doing good sounds sick sounds that, that got you fired up there I can tell that song that you guys are going all right welcome to church uh, how about announcements do we have any announcements from the congregation tonight we got big ones let's let's see if there's some here at Renew Strength Church we're welcoming you to church the country bumpkin thing yeah that's right that's right there we go, women's fall event. It's an exclusive only for women fall event. If, yeah, yeah. If I was down there, we would be eating some different stuff than the women. And go. it's rain or shine. It's in the barn if it's. Cool, rain or shine. It's going to happen. I see that, yeah. Wear your favorite bumpkin attire with women with the dressing up, right? I know it. That's good stuff. Uh, Bible quizzing, see that? I bet you, I, yep, Mr. Rob Taverner, the, the, the walking Bible dictionary, Mr. Rob Taverner. 
uh, Family Fall uh, Fest. The jugglers coming. We're gonna have the juggling competition amongst uh, amongst the parishioners. We're gonna have the uh, yeah Bible for Dummies. You guys know that's going on. Youth group. You guys can see all that stuff. Monday Bible study. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Pizzas. Um. Um, I'm lactose intolerant, Pastor Mark. I, but no. <laughs> okay. Uh, RSC Cares. That's going to be next week there by my wife, babysitting by John on me. Should say men's prayer breakfast with the Dr. Charles Brown. And uh, there we go. Church breakfast in the foyer, winter extreme. Huh? That's new, isn't it? Winter extreme. That must, you guys, so I don't know what that is, so. Gotcha. Cool. All right. There we go. So, Mr. Cannon. Hey, I just want to invite everybody, if you don't already know, it's Sunday morning. We have it at 930. We're doing a great study. It's a great way to connect with people. Um, it's really a great way to, to have real relationships with each other. I invite anybody. We're doing kind of a reset this week. So if you haven't been, please come on. You don't have to feel funny about not coming. You can come anyway. And... I would really like some people, but everybody's welcome, but somebody under the age of 50. Woo! So, I mean, <laughs> and all I'm saying is that, you know, I think young people could get a lot out of this because what they'll see is what they struggle with is what we struggle with. So I think it's a good contrast to see. 9.30. Where do you mean? 9.30 in the conference room. I'm busy. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're the age of 50, you're young. I heard that. Still young. Okay, how about other announcements from the congregation? Congregation? Oh, oh, oh. No, I we have a very special what? And speak up. Our most favorite Chris is having a birthday today. Stand up. Yeah, So everybody, let's give her a whoop, whoop, whoop. Happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. That probably completes the announcement segment of this. Uh, yeah, and uh, so we're gonna go to praise requests. I have a praise request myself. Praise report. Praise. Can I? I need a teleprompter. You know, if the if the, if the president gets a teleprompter, I should. Be, no, uh, that's a joke. Uh, I I I praise the Lord. My mother-in-law, you guys probably know, had her entire hip replaced, and uh, she's doing real good. Everything went just like it should. Um, she was walking within an hour of, after the recovery and whatnot, and uh, she got Aaron's with her. I mean, Aaron doesn't want to leave her alone in case, you know, whatever. But uh, she did get up by herself during the night even and told Aaron, I've got it, you know. So she's really doing good, so. I'm worried about her getting back to running speed. <laughs> um, okay, that's my praise report. Anyone else? Carl. Mom got released from the oncologist. Uh, everything came back to the cancer. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good, Carl. That's good, man. Yeah, that's that's great. Praise the Lord for that. Good job. That's good. That's yeah. good. All right. Oh, like yeah. Anyone else with some praise reports? Yeah. Mrs. Reverend Hackworth. Uh, Maggie made it back to Peru with a new driver's license and a negative COVID test. Praise the yeah. Lord. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. That's super. All right. Uh, anyone else with praise reports? Mr. Hamilton. You know, we've been having Bible study at McDonald's Tuesday morning and had a real good turnout. So. Wonderful. All right. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Huh? Right on. Bible study is going good with Mr. Hamilton. Very nice. You're, you're not reading. Okay. All right. Any other praise reports? Um, <laughs> yep, yep, this is Blake. I have a combination. So, praise report uh, we have lots of participants and lots of volunteers for the Furry Scurry on Saturday. So, I'm very thankful for that. And um, just uh, what do you do? Give God glory on Saturday for our community. Our whole community is going to be out. And also, prayer request good weather. Safety for all the participants and the volunteers. Amen. Right. Yes. Pretty scary. I'm not the pretty scary. Right. Right. <laughs> if Mrs. Blake is involved, I doubt if we're doing that. It's a 5K run for his hand sanctuary. Uh, gotcha. Okay, very good. I got you. Pretty scary. Pretty scary reports. Any other pretty scary reports? Yeah. Okay. How about prayer requests tonight? Yep, Mr. Tavner. Um, one of our daughter, one of our friends at school is just dealing with a daughter that has run away and into some illegal activities she should not be involved in. And they're good, godly people, and they've just been battling this battle for a while, and it's finally come to a head. So we just pray that God will bring back the prodigal, and God will bring some healing and, and uh, peace for in this situation, because it's, it's pretty bad. Wow. Okay. Your kids is age. Yes. And it's a family of faith? Oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. We'll pray for that. Yep. Prayer requests. Oh, yep, Mrs. Cannon. Um, Brandy Smith, that we have brought to the family many times, that is such a wonderful young woman um, in her 40s that had breast cancer and went through all of that, went into remission. Um, we've told y'all that she has taken on the burden of raising her bro drug addicted brother who has since passed away. It's two little girls and she went in remission from the breast cancer and then found out she had leukemia, went in remission to that. Within this last month, some different things happened while she'd been leading up to, she found out. They did a bone marrow test the week before last. Um, she's in full-blown leukemia again, stage four, and they have, um, she's, her father and her flew to MD Anderson yesterday um, to get a different opinion. Right now, the, the, the plan is to try to get, try to get her back into remission, and then she's going to have a complete bone marrow transplant. She has one brother that has 100% been a match, but they have to get her in full blown remission first. So I really, really, really appreciate if we could put her back on our prayer list. Absolutely. This is going to be a long time thing. She's not even going to be able to have the girls in her house because she's going to be so, and her older children, she has a granddaughter by her daughter, and her son just graduated this summer. <coughs> She will not be able to have any of her family members around her for the chance of infection. So she's in a real bad place. Okay. But she's got she's got the most amazing <laughs> attitude. She's so full of the Lord, and she's got the most. She is such a she is such a blessing. It's such a wonderful. It's just amazing. She but was actually on a conference call at work today. Let's put it that way. That's how amazing she is. At the same wow. time, on the conference call Brandy with the rest Smith. of us. Yep. Brandy, Brandy Smith, Smith, cancer survivor, yep. struggling with leukemia. Yep. A lot of stuff. A lot of movies and kids. And, yep. Okay. All right. Oh, yep, Danielle. Uh, there's a gentleman that Kyle works with, and his dad, and his uh, the guy's dad and the mom both have COVID, and the dad's in the hospital on a ventilator. And Kyle just wanted to ask for prayer for him, specifically the dad. And I'm sorry I don't remember names, but uh, 
just that the Lord would move in the situation and that his glory would be seen through all of it and healing for his dad. Kyle's colleague and father, COVID. Comments. Okay. Oh, hey. Look. <laughs> More grandkids. <laughs> hey, there's a, that's another praise. You know what? I'm going to go back because I should have said that anyway. My daughter right there. Uh, She's like goodbye. Was in a car. She, they, they've got another thing they've got to do. Which, they, she, they go to Faith Fellowship. You guys probably, she works there. No. Anyway. Fellowship in Springfield. She got it. She's in a car accident. I got your back, girl. She's pregnant. How many months are you? 19 weeks. 19 weeks. You can't just say months. Now, 19 weeks. <laughs> she, and she was in a car accident. When were you in a car accident? Friday. Friday. And uh, wasn't her fault, amazingly enough. Well, this is your fifth car accident. But uh, no problem. Baby heartbeat good. Everything normal. I just wish Jack could show for her everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but we're praising the Lord for that. I, I meant to bring, I meant to say that. I forgot. Yeah, praise the Lord that my my fifth grandbaby is fine. And uh, yeah, and if it's a boy, Jonathan, no kidding. See you guys. All right. Yeah. Or Daniel. Sorry, Dan. I, I, I'm not trying to. <laughs> but Dan. Um, I saw on Facebook Darlene posted that Brad and Alicia have COVID. They've yeah. tested positive. Oh, Zirkle. okay. Brad Zirkle. Brad Zirkle has COVID. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that's another prayer request. All righty. Oh, I'm missing something. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This is a praise. Sorry, I'm out of order. No, that's all right. We just did a praise out of order, so we're yeah. free. So um, a year ago, just about this time of year, I just started having seizures. And I just had a follow-up with his doctor this week, and he's doing amazing. We paid for his medicine, and there's been nothing for seven Thanks months, Lord. so we're just really, really thankful. Awesome. Great. Oh. Yeah. you've done for me what you've done for us lord god we praise you for how we see you we're watching for you lord god we're 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 petitioning you we're we're praying to you and then we we see you work we see you heal we see you save lord god we praise you lord god bless your name lord jesus the holy one we praise you god lord god we lift up these requests before you Lord God, there's people that need healing. There's a child that's running right now out there, Lord God. A child that knows. A child that's been brought up around faith. Lord God, pour into her. Lord God, put whatever catalyst, Lord God, put, put people in her way, put people in her path, Lord God. Go get her. Haul her back, Lord Jesus. People still struggling with the with COVID, Lord God, heal that stuff up, Lord God. Don't let the church fall to those things, Lord God. We want to see your glory. We're going to praise you for that. We praise you in the bad. We praise you in the good, Lord God, and we give you glory for all the good things. Continue to work, Lord Jesus. We need you. You're the only way to eternal life, Lord God. Praise and glorify you now in our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. 
All right, let's worship the Lord. There's power in his name. your 
promises oh I hang on to him God I hang on to what your word says what your promises are to us because it's true you are true and faithful God and Lord I pray that your spirit comes and rest on us just sweep through us God as the spirit was moving
How we long for you, Holy Spirit, to just move in our lives. Less of me, more of you, Lord. Less of me, more of you. Come and have your way, God. May this flesh just die down, Lord, and let you rise up. How many of you guys know that he is good? Do you know he's good? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've tasted and I've seen that he's good. He's never let me down. Never. Never. Lord, I know. Thank you. You don't answer all my questions, but you hear me when I speak. You don't keep my heart from breaking, but when it does, you weep with me. You're so close that I can feel you. I lost the words to pray. And my my eyes have never seen seen you. I've seen enough to say. I know that you are
good. I know that you are good. So good. Amen. Amen. Oh, to have a grateful heart. And that's more challenging these days than ever, isn't it? Everybody's always, everyone's critical, and I fall into it myself. And I don't want a critical spirit. I want a spirit like Pastor Mark talked about Sunday. That was good, wasn't it? Talking about Jonathan, one of my very favorite. Jonathan, then we talk about Caleb and Joshua. And when the whole world or everyone around them is saying, no, God can't. They're saying, yes, he can. And I want to be in that number. And Lord, I want to be grateful for what you're doing. Lord, thank you for everything you do. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express? could sing these songs as I often do but every song must end and you never do so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. This is what we do. With my arms stretched wide.
on your name but because of your grace because of the blood of Christ because of your mercy in our lives Lord we can come to you and I'm so grateful for that Lord is so grateful praise you God Lord I pray that you will just anoint the people who are speaking tonight and Lord let it just touch our minds and hearts God in Jesus name Amen Hello, hello. I don't see anybody upstairs except for you guys, so I'm staying right here. I like it better down here. How y'all doing? Okay. Well, we're still in discipleship class, right? And this is week four, if I've got it right. Is that right? Anybody? And so um, you get me for about 15 minutes and then you get brother John are you up and then Brian I think so get over with me and then you got some fantastic speakers coming I can't wait to hear what they have to say so okay I want to get right in it because I was told I had 15 minutes and that's not a lot of time so tonight's topic is prayer and uh, I'm going to talk about what is prayer then these guys are going to cover some other portions. Okay, so let's start with prayer on the night we talk about prayer. Okay, uh, Lord, I just need you tonight. I really, really need you tonight, and we all do. Uh, we are not here to listen to any special person, Lord. We're here to hear from you. So I pray we do that, even in a disciple cl discipleship class, God, that we hear from you tonight, Lord. Uh, just come and be in our presence, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, do we have... Uh, Go ahead, if you guys can just put the first two things up, that would be great. So, um, yeah, I'm going to start with the, uh, some factoids about, do you have the PowerPoint? Some, some facts about prayers, just a short list, because I like facts. Facts are fascinating. So, okay, you can't read it very well, so try, but I'm going to read it to you from my list. 
These are just some interesting facts I found online about prayer. The number one is there are 650 prayers listed in the Bible. That's a lot, right? 66 books, 650 prayers. There are approximately 450 recorded answers to prayer in the Bible. This is from the Gospel Coalition, which is a real trusted site. The first time prayer, this was interesting, the first time prayer is mentioned in the Bible is Genesis 4.26. So four chapters in, it's mentioned. It says on that list there that there's some references where God, uh, where there was some discussion with God, but prayer being mentioned. And this is, um, at that time, people began to call on the name of the Lord. That's simply the first mention of prayer. Then number four, the Bible records Jesus praying 25 different times during his earthly ministry. So now, if anyone asks you how many times did Jesus pray in the Bible, you can say 25 times. Now you know that. I love stuff like that. Okay, um, Paul mentions prayer 41 times. The word amen is first mentioned in Numbers 522. So that's why we say amen. It's throughout scripture. And that's the last one. Amen, you guys know this, right? It means let it be, so be it. That's what it means. So um, depending on your tradition, where you came from, some people say amen, amen. I guess um, most of us around here say amen, though, right? So I want to talk about what is prayer, though. If you go to slide number two, um, I only have a few slides tonight since I don't have much time. Now, I tried to stick to my assignment. I'm sorry. I probably delved into your area a little bit. It's really hard to stay, but since I'm first, I get a little leeway there, I guess. So that's great. Um, so, and, and I do want to tell you guys, I haven't gotten to speak for a while, and it's, I'm just really happy to be here. This is an honor. God is amazing. His timing's amazing. This has been the most prayer-filled year of my life, and I get to speak on prayer. So that's just how cool God is, right? It's just so cool. Um, so, okay, I first want to tell you, uh, or I want to ask you, I'll ask maybe two people, if you had to tell me in three words what is prayer, what is prayer, Paula? Three words. Okay. All right. Define, Define prayer in three words. Beth Ann. Intimacy with God. Okay, intimacy with God. That's all good. There, I mean, there's no wrong answer, right? I wrote down um, talking to God. It's simple, but um, that's a simple answer. Uh, Webster said this, let me find my place in my notes, an address to God in word or thought, that's great, that's right. But I found this online, slide number two. This is, this is from um, Got Questions. If you ever want to know anything about the Bible, go to gotquestions.org, O-R-G. It's an awesome website, and um, I go there a lot when I'm looking up things. Prayer is communication of the human soul with the Lord who created the soul. I like that because that, that gives a deeper... To me, that gives a deeper thought, a you know, deeper meaning to what prayer is. Um, and then there's a second part of that. Prayer is the primary way for the believer in Jesus Christ to communicate his emotions and desires with God and fellowship with him because it is, there's some give and take in prayer, right? If we're one-sided, that's probably a concern for us. And in our, um, how many of you guys have been through the discipleship program at church, done this packet? Have you done this packet? There's, there's a story here on what is prayer called um, talking and listening. So I want to just real briefly talk about that because of the lack of time. But it talks about married couple because that's probably the best relationship that we can compare to our relationship with the Lord. That, you know, the communication, the closeness, that's what it should be similar to. And so there's couple number one is a couple that sits on a couch every night and never talks. We have some music going on over there. Um, a couple that sits on a couch every night. Is it the Rice Singers? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so um, couple number one is they sit on the couch every night and they never talk. They have no relationship. And this would be symbolic of a Christian who has a prayerless life, like you believe in Jesus, but you don't ever talk to him. So how can he talk to you? Okay. Couple number two is, I like this one because I, I got a feeling some women can relate to this, is at the breakfast table every morning, the woman is chattering away and her husband's reading the paper and he's not listening. So, you know, we talk a lot, right? We talk more, so they say, than they do. 
and then they don't listen. But that's, that's an example of a one-sided relationship where one person's trying to communicate and the other's not listening. It's not healthy. It's not good. And then the last example, which I love, because this is a picture of my life right now, um, a couple walking through the park, and both of them are conversing on the events of the day, and they have a good relationship. It involves talking and listening, and this is the symbolic of the prayer life we should have with the Lord, where we're talking and we're listening, and I just really love that because Dan and I started walking this year a lot, and we walk and talk. So if you're married, we're talking about prayer tonight, but I'm gonna give you just a little bit of advice. If you're able to get out and walk and get quiet because it shuts out the world and just talk, it's really a great way to communicate. And if you're not up to walking, then have a hot frothy drink, coffee or tea or whatever, and turn everything off and just spend some time together talking. Okay, so enough about marriage, back on to prayer because that's the topic for tonight. All right, so talking and listening, some examples. But what's amazing about prayer is that we have access to God. Do you ever think about that? Do you ever think what a big deal that is, that we have access to God? So uh, sometimes we're kind of casual about that, but that's a big deal. It's a really big deal. So you guys don't have to answer this, but I want you to think about this a minute. What are you grappling with right now? Your health, your marriage, depression, anxiety, um, financial problems. God has invited us to come to him and pour out our hearts. This is something he wants from us. He desires that relationship, that closeness with us. He wants us to talk to him about our needs. He's there for us, and no one has better access than anyone else. Have we believed that at times? Do do you ever think that I need so-and-so to pray for me because they have a direct line to God? I know we all do that. Haven't we all done that? So um, some of you have a special ringer on your phone for special people. Jenny does. Do I have one, by the way? Do I? Oh, I feel so special. I know because Jenny is a good friend of mine, and when her phone rings, she'll say, that's Jim, or that's Levi. So she has a special ring on her phone. I don't, I'm not that tech savvy, so I don't have that. But she's able to screen her calls, because if she doesn't have a lot of time, she's going to, you know, reject a call because she's too busy. Jim says she rejects his calls. I, I have not been witness to that, okay? But, um, and so I don't have special ringers, but I also screen my calls because you can look at your phone, right? So this happened to us last night. We were, we were in Huber Heights and we were driving down the road and I got a phone call and we were talking and we're trying really hard to put our phones aside because we're doing all this walking thing and stuff. I said, I need to take this phone call with someone I needed to talk to. So I screened my call, but this is the thing about God. He's not screening your calls. He is not screening your calls. He's not saying that he listens to Pastor Mark, but he's not going to listen to you because Pastor Mark's a pastor. God listens to all of us. And, and we get sometimes we get into this mode where we think that some people have a better line or a more direct line than others do, and it's just not true. We all have a direct line to God. So I want to um, jump ahead to a scripture because my time's running out. Can you guys put up the next scripture for me, please? Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. I I do want to say this, too, that he takes our requests seriously. I know sometimes when we pray, some things seem big to us, and they feel like they'll feel big to God, and some things feel smaller, or we feel like other people have things going on, and our stuff is, you know, just lesser. But God takes everything we say seriously. Now, he weighs it, of course. We know that, right? Because he sees the big picture. He weighs everything out, but he listens. He's patient, and he's always available. So Hebrews 4, 14 to 16, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Did you... Do we do? Yeah, okay. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In all points, Jesus was tempted. In all points, yet he sympathizes with us. I love knowing that about him. I love knowing that there's nothing I experienced that he didn't experience because the Bible tells me he was tempted in every way possible. But at the same time, 
he sympathizes with me. He doesn't hold me to this impossible standard. He sympathizes with me. It's not that he overlooks sin or he doesn't care about sin, but he understands that I am a mess because we're all a mess at times. Life is messy. We're weak. We're human. We make mistakes, and he knows we're going to struggle. And I love knowing that Jesus sympathizes with me to the point that I can go boldly to the throne with my needs. And there I'm going to find mercy, and there I'm going to find grace. He's our example. He's our example. So he's also our example in praying for others. So I mentioned that um, I prayed a lot this year. I've walked, I've journaled, I've done a lot. It's just been a year of me for just really getting alone with God. But if I only prayed for myself, then I'm missing out on a huge um, benefit of being in the kingdom of God. And that's participating in what God does in the world, in men's lives. So I put that quote up, if you would, please, the next one. This is by a guy um, named Pete Greig. I think it is. He, he runs this website called 24-7 Prayers. And in prayer, we use our will to come into agreement with God's will. Jesus said, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. When we pray, now think about this a minute, because it's a concept you have to think about uh, just a little bit here. When we ask God to move, he moves. If we don't ask God to move, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. If we don't ask God to move, if I don't start praying for the salvation of my friend or my child or this person and saying, God, work on their heart, if I'm not praying for a missionary, if I'm not praying about a situation and no one else is, God's appointed me to pray for that situation because when we pray, God moves. He's asked us to join him in what he's doing here on earth. And it's really amazing. It's an honor to be included in what God wants us to do. So prayer is joining and locking arms with God in what he's doing here on earth. It's a privilege. It's something that um, we should be excited to do, and it's something that we should be willing to do. So I'm going to end with this so these guys can have their time. Um, let's be careful about listening to the whispers of the enemy because he's really good at devaluing prayer. He's very good at that. He makes us think it's not necessary. He makes us feel that we're too busy. We convince ourselves we're too busy. Um, he is, he is um, an expert at what he does. He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, right? So he's really good. If I have an enemy, if I have someone who I want to get off track, I'm going to come at them and I'm going to tell them a lie. I'm going to say to them, you know, if, if I have someone that I'm, I know and I'm evil and I want to mess them up, if I want to wreck their life, then I'm going to come to them and I'm going to tell them things to get them way off track. And this is what he does. This is exactly what he does. Um, he knows that when we pray that we push back the kingdom of darkness and he hates that. He hates that with a passion. So don't fall into that trap of believing that your prayers don't matter or that you don't have a direct line to God, or that other people's prayers are more important. Just, just be careful about what you let the enemy say to you because he's good at what he does. Um, last scripture, Ephesians 6.18. So Ephesians 6, if you guys remember, is the armor of God. It's the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, all that armor. But did you know the last verse talks about prayer? We always, we always picture, you know, if you're in Sunday school or... You know, you see the pictures of this, all this armor, and that's awesome. But Ephesians 6.18, um, wait for them to pull it up here. Ephesians 6.18 is the very tail end of this armor. So be prepared. You, are you guys pulling it? <laughs> it's just a second. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and read it, and then they'll put it up there. Okay, Ephesians 6.18. Pray in the Spirit. On all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So, put on your armor, be ready to go to battle, and who are we battling? The enemy, right? And then, pray in the Spirit. On all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Okay? That's what is prayer, and now... John, are you up? John is up. Okay.
All right. I can't believe that I got sandwiched in between Mrs. Cruz and Mr. Ward. It's like they got the statistician off the bench to sub for Kevin Durant while LeBron James is getting a rest or something. Um, okay. <clears throat> My segment is why we pray. Um, it's interesting, my, another one of my sons that lives in Finley is speaking tonight at an FCA conference. And he says, I'm probably on a totally different subject than you. I'm doing uh, mine on prayer. And I said, really? <laughs> I said, that's what I'm doing mine on. And uh, he says, oh, yeah, what's your stuff? And I said, well, we got curriculum. Um, and uh, so, you know, I got the four elements of prayer. And uh, he said, me too. And uh, so we read them together. We both started saying them together as we were doing it. The four elements of prayer is what I'm going to be going over. Those elements as listed in our curriculum are adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and petitioning. Why pray? Yeah. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and petitioning. Now, I'm going to kind of combine Adoration and thanksgiving. I asked permission to take them out of order, and uh, I got the thumbs up. So, um, just to me, they're, they're very closely related. Um, adoration would be praising God because of who He is. Who, be, praising God because of His character, right? And uh, I'm going to go right to some scripture with uh, a guy that knew how to praise God. Um, we can probably all guess where this is going. Can we go to the first scripture that I had? Psalms 103, 1 through 5. Dun, 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 dun. See, I, I brought this. Oh, here we go. You guys, this is familiar to you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. He's talking about God's character. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like eagles. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, you know, just like it says, God's eternal qualities in Romans 1, you know, God's eternal qualities, His, uh, his uh, eternal power, His divine nature has been revealed to us. Um, we, we go right to Him and praise Him for who He is. Uh, we, but we, we need to get used to it, right? We're going to be doing it for eternity. Revelation 4, we see, you know, the, the 24 elders and the multitude all around the throne while Lightning peals from the throne and the thunder claps on the sea of glass surrounded by the, the rainbow around the throne. The entire multitude is just praising the Lord God. Holy, holy, holy. I heard a, I heard a radio preacher uh, not too long ago um, explain that there's no uh, adjective in, in the Hebrew language, that's like good, better, best, or holy, holy, or holiest, you know. And so they would say the word three times. That's the highest level of holiness. Holy, holy, holy. It's uh, adoration is a testimony to his character. Um, now we're going to jump down to thanksgiving. Um, let's jump to the uh, Philippians 4, 5 through 6. I'm going to read a quote by Paul Bilheimer while we do that. Worship and praise of God demands a shift of center from self to God. One cannot pray without relinquishing occupation with self. This results in mental wholeness. Praise produces forgetfulness of self and forgetfulness of self is health. It's actually kind of hard to say. Um, all right, Philippians 4.5. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Um, as we praise 
God in thanksgiving. It is praising Him for what He's done. God deserves our praise, right? I mean, He's the only one. He's the eternal one. We praise Him because of His character and adoration. In thanksgiving, we praise Him for what He's done. I know what He's done for me completely changed my life, right? Saved me from absolute darkness. And he's done that for all of us that know him. We praise him for what he's done. We praise him for our everyday needs. That's usually a child's first, that's what a child first learns how to pray, right? Is blessing the food. We see that example. Jesus gave us that example even. Um, you see him at the Last Supper, before he, take, he takes the bread and before he breaks it, he blesses it, right? He gives us that example. Um, thanking him for everyday needs, praising him for that. Um, let's see. We need to jump down to another one from David. This guy knows how to praise God. Psalms 139, 13 through 17. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. The great is the sum of your thoughts. I love it. Um, praising God for what he's done. For what he's done for us. Um, I'm going to read. Uh, did I give you? Yeah, we already did Philippians. Good. Okay. So. We've done adoration. We've done thanksgiving. We're, we're basically out of time. Um, we're going to go to the next element is confession. Let's go to 1 John 1, 9. Man, it goes quick up here. 1 John 1, 9, the next element of prayer is confession. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, uh, the prayer of salvation is usually, not usually, is our first initial prayer, right? That's our first initial prayer, asking to be forgiven, confessing our, confessing our, shin, our sins. Sorry, now I'm trying to speed up. Um, let's go to James 5.16. 50 minutes is not enough time. Cheryl did that so smooth, and I am having to rush. Did we get it? Yeah. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avail, avails much. Why pray? It's effective, right? It isn't just a command. It isn't, it isn't the, 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 the necessity of life. It avails much. Prayer changes destiny, right? Think about that. It's not set, right? We, we are the, we're the only created thing that can actually change the outcome of, of, of the future through fervent prayer. It avails much. I've got to keep rolling. All right, let's hit Luke 11. I'm at least going to read my scriptures, Brian. Luke 11. All right, here we go. Luke 11, let's hit this one. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Luke gives the Cliff Notes version of the Lord's Prayer. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And he said to them, Which of you, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. Do -do 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 -do. Now, For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. 
I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Let's just stop on it right there. Oh, no, let's read that one. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Um, petitioning is the, the uh, last element of prayer. Um, going to God for our everyday needs. And our everyday needs include our spiritual life, right? Um, we, we see a great example. Jesus is telling us this is how we're going to pray. Just like you had a just like you needed something to eat, you had somebody stop over and you beat on the neighbor's door and continue to beat until he opens the door, Jesus said, knock and the door will be opened unto you. Again, just like Cheryl mentioned, God moves on what we have faith for and he's waiting for us to petition him. And, it, and it's effective, right? Let's hit the last one. Sorry, Brian, we're rolling. Matthew 6, 9 through 15. This is the bigger version of the Lord's Prayer. I'm sorry. In this manner, there, uh, yeah. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I didn't know I was going to be this close on time, Brian. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. You see, are you seeing the elements, right? He's talking about God's character. Hallowed be our name. Here, here's another element uh, about confession. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Give us our daily bread. He's talking about what we need to eat and also what we need in him, right? And do not lead us into temptation. He's petitioning. But deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's a terrifying verse, right? I, I have, I, 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 that, that verse has spoke to me personally on more than one occasion where I feel as though I've been wronged, you know. I feel I get indignant for myself, you know. And maybe I feel as though I haven't done anything wrong. And... Uh, I use the excuse, well, I don't like drama. I'm just going to leave that person alone. You know, I'm not even going to deal with them and stuff. And that's not how it's supposed to be. If we don't forgive those that's wronged us, we affect our own judgment day, right? And how God deals with us. I had a story. Do I have time to tell the story, Brian? I'm going to be quick. Sorry. I just wanted to end with this. I have one story. Um, Mr. Ford gave me a book years ago about prayer. I was, I was in here, and he just walked up to me and stuffed a book. I had my hands in my pocket. He stuffs the book under my arm. He says, read this, and then give it to somebody else. And uh, it was a book on prayer. Um, had a story in there about uh, a community in the Midwest in the early 60s that was a farm community, and uh, the entire economy of the small community was based on the farming and crops and they were experiencing an extreme drought that summer um, it was to the point where that critical point where the, the crops are up but if it doesn't rain soon there's already some loss and it's going to be major loss and it's going to affect everything from the hardware store to the diner to obviously the farmers and it's tragic in a God-fearing church-going community the elders and the pastors decide to have a middle of the week special prayer meeting on an odd day to truly petition God about rain. It's time to pray. It's come to that. It's time to pray, right? And so they pick a day and everyone goes to the, on a hot late afternoon, the sun blazing, everyone goes to the church. The pastor is out front shaking hands as each one comes into the church. And there's one young girl walking into the church carrying an umbrella and the pastor makes a comment not thinking you know says uh young lady is the sun really getting to you that bad and she says pastor i thought that this was a prayer meeting about rain and it hit him right in the heart 
And he then realized she had her rain boots on. And it completely changed the course of that evening. The Spirit of God came on that pastor and he walked into the church and led his congregation before the throne of God. On their faces and on their knees, in faith, referencing the, the young girl's faith to the congregation. In faith, they poured out and petitioned to God for rain. While they were praying, the sky turned dark and the lightning flashed through the windows of the church. And they were startled out of their prayer by thunder and it poured. And it rained on that community and they had a soggy week because the prayer of the faithful avails much. God is waiting to move based on our faith and our petitioning of Him. We praise Him for who He is. We praise Him for what He's done for us. We confess to Him. We keep a short account with God and confess our sins to Him. And we petition Him for our daily lives, for our daily bread, what goes in our mouth, and what goes in our spirit. That's all I got. Sorry, Brian. You can take as much time as you want. <laughs> These guys talked about um, what is prayer, why pray, my segments, how to pray. There's some overlap between what these guys have talked about and what I'm going to talk about. But uh, before I get into the curriculum and what, what it says, I, I guess the first thing that strikes me is God's always wanted to have fellowship with these people. When we see Jesus walking the earth, we see him talk to his disciples and people, and he calls them friends. Some of the last conversations, he says, I call you a friend. And I look at the way God wants to have conversation and relationship with, with us just like Jesus had relationship with His disciples and His friends. How, how, do, you, how do you start praying? First of all, be yourself. God al already knows your sin. He already knows your need. He already knows your situation before you ever ask Him. And, and people would say, well, then why even ask Him? I think God wants to wants to see if we're being honest with ourselves. Think about it. You know, he, he knows your situation, Rob, before you ever come with it. Is my child honest with their, with their problems, or are they trying to hide it? You know, t talk like you talk to a friend. You don't need to talk in the King James Version from 1611 or whatever, you know. I mean, I've been in little groups and people, I'm like, you know, I'm going to pray first, you pray next, and people get scared. They don't want to pray out loud. They think they've got to talk in some foreign language. Just talk like you talk to me, Carl. When you talk to the Lord, He, he just he knows who you are. You know, here, here I am. It, it's, it's Carl. It's, it's me again. And how, how does God see the hearts of six billion people in every thought, Pete? I can't answer that. And the skeptic would say there's no way there's anything like that out there that can see the thoughts of six billion people simultaneously at one time. And I don't have the answer for that. But if you've got a better answer for how did this whole thing get here with all the people in it, then we'll look at that one. But I, I don't see anything that, that explains the creation better than God. And he says he wants to know his kids. Um, the first thing I, I think we got to start with is thankfulness. John talked on it with his segment there. Jane, I'm going to miss Joe at Easter especially. He always talked about the blood of Christ. If, if I never get anything else other than what Christ did at the cross for me, is that enough? We've got to be careful. You know, I realize the Bible says pray for things. That's all bonus stuff. What he did for me at the cross was a thing I couldn't afford, I didn't deserve, and he did it. If I never get one more thing, he's already done enough. So that, that's where I start. Um, I think the Lord's looking for the thankfulness of his kids. One of my favorite stories in the whole Bible is, a, is the story of the ten lepers that Jesus healed. He's walking along and 
You know, leprosy in the Old Testament was, was the, the terminal disease that you never got to go home and hug your wife and your kids from again. It, it was always the parallel of sin. And you died in that stuff. And these ten go by and said, you know, have mercy on us. And he says, go show yourself to the priest. I don't think, God, I don't think Jesus ever slowed down hardly. And they, on the way they're healed, and one guy comes back and thanks him. Says he, he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a, ch- a child of Israel. That's one of the saddest stories in the whole Scripture. And it, it saddened Jesus' heart. The unthankfulness of people walking the earth is is a sure way to not probably get what you pray for. I think we've got to start with a thankful heart. If I never get one more thing out of him, was it enough? The whole notion of prayer, I guess the one caveat I'll start with is be careful that we don't seek the blessing and forget that we really seek his face and who he is first. You know, do I have a Christmas list of 18 things? And if, Lord, if you didn't fill them all out, I'm, I'm ticked. Christ and Him crucified, the blood at the cross. Joe always talked about it at Easter. I always loved Joe's talking about the blood covered my sins. And he did a wonderful job. I'm going to miss that come Easter. Okay, got to, got to roll here. We're going to ask, seek, and knock is the first set of things that John also is in his presentation. Um... What have I got to start with there? Second Chronicles. That's not in my ask, seek, and knock. That was was in the part about being humble. I love this little set of passages right here. Um, It's Solomon. Solomon finished, he's finished building the temple. It takes him about seven years. Successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make it to the house of the Lord in his own house. Next, just keep rolling, please. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, said to him, I've heard your prayer. And have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Just keep on going. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to, to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. If my here we go. Here's the here's the mother load right here. If my people who are called by my name. Now this is a conditional statement. A conditional statement is an if then. If you do this, then I'll move. This is not a genie in the lamp, and it's just, there it all comes. You know, there's some conditions on these prayers being answered. If my people who are called by my name and will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. There's a lot in that right there. That's Solomon. Supposedly the guy with the most wisdom that ever walked. I can't figure out how he had all those wives, John. <laughs> that wasn't in the script. That, that, where's Pastor Mark? Mark, that, that wasn't in here. <laughs> there he is. A humble heart. A thankful heart and a humble heart. Being earnest. Uh, John, I think he had it in his verses. The, the fervent, effectual a prayer of a righteous man avails much. Um... It says it's a fervent prayer. Are, are you serious about this stuff? You know, this stuff, that, that's, that's, that's a pretty significant statement in that set of passages there. We've got to be rooted in the Word. Um, John, I don't have that one in there. John 15, 7 talks about that. Um, what's the next one I have up? James, uh, Sorry about this. I'm kind of running a little bit past my notes here. Um, finding a, okay, the ask, seek, and the knock. There, there we go. John hit, hit on that some. We're not going to spend too much time there because we've already kind of looked at that a little bit. But um, Matthew 7, do I have that one in there? I, I think it's in there. I probably got her out of order. Right there. Next one for me, please. Talking about asking again. Hit me the next one there, please. James. Matthew, that's Matthew. Okay. There we go. Just talking about asking. Everyone who asks receives. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask. Keep going. We're, we're, we're running out of the time. The cries of the nursery have reached the throne room. Tell them. You lust and you don't have. 
You fight, yet you do not have because you do not ask. I think Cheryl talked about that a little bit in her notes. You know what? Ask him. You know, the answer might be no. It might be yes. It might be wait. But ask. You know, when, when your kids were little, it's the same analogy. Um, okay, moving on to the next little slot there. Um, Finding a quiet place. Do I have a Matthew 6.6 6 in there? I think I do. You know, we live in a noisy world. These cell phones, I'd like to take a ball-peen hammer to them most days. But they're handy, but uh, do you have a, do we have 6.6, 6, Matthew 6.6? 6, 6? Right here. Find a place where you can shut a door and, and, and lay that phone down, put it on vibrate or whatever, get rid of that thing and get away from the noise. Um, it reminds me the story of uh, Elijah. He's, he's, he's running for his life. He's just slaughtered 450 of the prophets of Baal. And Second Chronicles, I probably, nope, that's, I'll just tell you in a nutshell. Elijah, he, he tells God, he said, just, I'm tired. I want to die. And he lays down and God feeds him and waters him and wakes up. And, uh, and, and he, the Lord says, get up, Elijah, and go watch for me. And, it, and there was, a, there was an, a storm and he wasn't in that. There was an earthquake and he wasn't in that. And there was a fire and he wasn't in that. And he said there was a whisper. And that was the Lord. And that, that's, that's for you and me. You know, the, the speed and the noise of this world will... It, it's one of Satan's best weapons. He just has it on autopilot. Just put noise into him. He, and you'll never hear the Lord. I, I, that voice is real too. One of the biggest things I think that we forget is most of our, a lot of our prayer ought to be with our ears. Just listening for the Lord. You know, the, one of the things He's laid on me lately is, Lord... Just show me my sin. Show me my sin. Show me my heart. And then get quiet and listen. You know, some of that prayer time just needs to be your ears. Okay. Um, finding that quiet place. Accountability and agreement with others. It says where two or more are gathered. It, it speaks about there's power in that. Everybody ought to have one or two people that you can really get down to the, the brass tacks with. It says, confess your sins one to another. I'm not going to spew that right here in front of all of you, but I might, I might go pull my closest buddy or two and say, hey, this is the flying the ointment here. Let's, let's, let's look at it. What do you think? You know, confess your sins one to another. Pray with you. You know, find those close friends and pray with them. The Lord says, when, when I see two or three of you agree on something, it moves me. Praying in Jesus' name. When Jesus died on the cross, it said that veil was torn. That veil, the Holy of Holies, was behind it. Once a year, the Feast of Atonement, Yom Kippur, the high priest, would go in there. The last several hundred years, they said he had a rope tied on him, and he'd go in there, and if he wasn't right... He'd fall over dead because the Holy of Holies, you didn't go in there sloppy. You didn't go in there not right. He'd fall in there dead and they'd pull him out because nobody else could go in. Jesus dies on the cross, that veil's torn. It lets you and I go right into the Holy of Holies. That was a game changer. Joe, back on Joe's, that blood. The blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross, tore that veil, opened that thing up, gave us that access right into the Holy of Holies. What a privilege. Have we got sloppy with it? That, that was a high cost. Wait on the Lord. Psalms 27, 14 says wait on Him. Now most of us, patience is overrated, isn't it? Some of these people in the Bible, they waited for 
a long time, a lifetime, some of them. Literally a lifetime. Some of them waited for something to happen. Um, obedience is critical to receiving what we are asking for. I said these things, a lot of them, our prayers are conditional on some things. What's our obedience like to the Lord? First John, do I have that one on there? First John 3, 21 to 22. I blew up my, my chart back there. Debbie's pulling out her hair and saying, where is he? Where, where'd he go? Um, our heart's got to be right. If I'm robbing banks every Friday night and I go ask the Lord for prayer on Sunday morning, it's probably not going to work. Okay, hindrances to prayer, wrong motive. James 4, 3. Do I have that one up? I'm running pretty fast here. I'll get you out of here. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Our prayers have got to line up with the will of God. Next, next Wednesday at night, we're going to talk about the will of God, being in His will. Uh, another hindrance to prayer, lack of integrity in our relationships. Matthew 5, 23, 24. Deb, please. If you bring your gift to the altar and there's some, something wrong with a brother, fill in the blank, brother, sister, husband, wife, if your relationships elsewhere are a train wreck, you better clean that shop up first. Lack of integrity in our relationships. That's, that's still, still the same, yeah. Unconfessed sin, Psalm 66, 18. These are still hindrances. Okay. Have we confessed our sin? You know, that's not just a given. If, if we're not diligent in trying to... Like I said, one of the things the Lord's laid on my heart lately, Lord, show me my sin. David, when he sinned with Bathsheba, the prophet Nathan goes to him a year later and tells him the little sheep story. And David says he was, he says he was furious. He said, that man ought to surely die, Carl. And Nathan, a prophet, probably shaking in his boots, said, Great King David, that man's you. David couldn't even find his own sin. Sixty-some-year-old man, that, that story blows my mind. That's been heavy on my heart for several years. <sighs> Lack of faith, James 1, 6 through 7. The story that comes to my head, Jesus, early in his ministry, he says he stumbles into Nazareth. And he said, well, isn't that, isn't that Joe's boy? He's as common as a dollar bill. You know, he, they, they didn't have any faith in Jesus in Nazareth, so it says he did not do many miracles there. This is the same line. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, that the man that doesn't have faith. Same, same parallel there when Jesus goes into Nazareth. Okay. God's mind can be changed. I'm going to ice this cake and we're going to send you home. Three places early in the Bible with Moses. I see Moses comes down from the mountain. It's a big naked party going on. Read the story, Pete. God says, Moses, just stand back. I'll, I'll just wipe him out and we'll start over. And Moses, Moses starts into a real serious pleading to God to not destroy him. God changes his mind. He doesn't. There's another place... Uh, the spies go into the promised land, the 12 spies, they come back, Joshua and Caleb get it right, the other 10 are leading the whole 3 million or whatever down the other path, and God says, stand back, I'm going to clean the house here, and Moses talks God out of it there too. A little later on, and they're in the desert wandering for their 40 years, and Korah, a man who was leading some guys against Moses, and same thing. God said, just stand back, Moses, I'm going to just drop them all and start over and there's 14,700 of them died before Moses and Aaron get them, get, talk God into stopping. God's mind can be changed. 
Your prayers are, are heard. They matter. You're not bothering God. You know, He, he, he wants this. It says early on in, in, in the book of, of Genesis, He says, we get an indication after Adam and Eve of sin. It said, and God was it walking through the, the, the garden in the cool of the day looking for them. That's how close they were before sin messed it up. That's, that's, that's how God wants to be with us. He, he desires that. You're not bothering Him. Okay. Next week, we're going to be talking about the will of God. Hope you come back. Hope we haven't scared you off. Um, let's pray and close. Lord, we... We thank you for this opportunity. Because of the blood of your son, Jesus, Lord, we, we have that chance to come right into the holy of holies, Lord. I pray, pray we'd not get sloppy with that. Take it for granted. Greatest privilege we've ever been afforded. Lord, just slow us down. Let us find a quiet spot, Lord. We can sense something spiritual in you. It's, we, can, we can sense it. We know you're there. We know you have an ear. We can see your hand work in our lives, Lord. And Lord, we would not sell your promises short. I said early, if nothing else ever, if I never got anything else, Lord, what you did at the cross is enough. We see your word full of promises. We see a promised land for a people, and we see that in our own lives. So, Lord, we, we're thankful that you give us that. You, you, you've given us everything we ever needed. Lord, you're not out of resources and desire to, to bless your children. So, Lord, I pray we would, we would be your children, be those children that you've called us to be. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. We just pray these things in your son's name. Amen.